everybody. Today I'm going to do another page uh, that with a sketch that I've created uh, with the idea of using the small paper pads, either a 6x6 or 8x8 paper pad, for my designer paper. And this sketch utilizes hexagons, but you could use any shape. You could use flowers or circles or triangles, which are becoming real popular uh, for your shape. I just thought hexagons went really well uh, with my picture. For some reason that this seemed to be the thing that would fit this photograph. This is a photograph from several years ago I found recently and I even wrote the date on the back. I was amazed since I don't typically uh, do that. And I just got in this paper from uh, Basic Gray, the PB&J collection, in the 6x6 pad and the colors are perfect uh, for the photo. Basic Gray does not print on the back side of their papers that they put in their paper pads. But you still get a lot of great designs here and so I know I'm going to use that red floral and this stripe and some of these other small prints and even this really large print here I think will really complement the flowers but I'm, I, I probably need to cut it up, tone it down a little bit so it doesn't overpower uh, the picture. So I'm going to use several of those and I'm going to do them in the hexagons. Um, to determine the size for my hexagons, what I did was cut out several shapes, uh, several different sizes using my Cricut, and I used the SCAL software, SCAL, that's no longer available for the Cricut, but uh, of course if you have a cartridge for Cricut or if you're using a silhouette um, or any other kind of die cutting system, all you need is a hexagon shape. If you don't have a hexagon shape and a punch or uh, have a die cutter, you can cut your own uh, using a template. And I'll share with you some ideas for how to get a template on my blog. If you want to check that out, the blog post that goes with this uh, video, it will, will share with you some ways that you can get the hexagon shape because it's very easy to trace and cut yourself. And I, I use the basic gray magnetic mat. And just to give myself kind of a rough idea, how I'm going to arrange things. I'm going to put the picture, uh, based on the sketch, it goes right in the middle. And that's kind of unusual, but the title and everything I think will balance it and it will work pretty well uh, in the middle. So uh, I cut these so I could get an idea of what size hexagon that I wanted to use. And I got several of them out here and played around. And I think the one that was one and three quarters inch high, I believe is what I kind of had in mind. And I think that's going to end up being about the best uh, size for my hexagons. Um, another way to determine size is to take what you've cut out or punched out and use the negative and lay that over your pattern paper. So some of your patterns you know, you can use any of the sizes, but then when you get into these larger prints, you may have to consider, you know, what, like these very little ones, I wouldn't really get a lot of the color, a lot of the print. So I was looking at the two larger sizes, um, and that helped me determine which uh, of the hexagon sizes that I wanted to work with. Okay. Now for other materials besides this uh, paper pad, I'll probably put my journaling either directly on the background or on some ledger paper. And for the title, I've pulled some thickers. I have uh, some well-used yellow thickers here that I may uh, work with. I've got three words in my title and I very often like to do the words, I like to do an entire word out of one set. Uh, that's just my style, um, but very often if I have multiple words, I use multiple different kinds of, of letters, whether they're die cut or stickers or thickers. So I'm probably going to use one of the yellows, and I've had this polka dot for a long time. I bought it as a grab bag type of thing, and probably not something I would have gravitated towards, but I think it's going to work uh, with this. We're going to give it a try, and of course I've got all the letters for it. And I just got in these new DIY thickers. These are from uh, uh, Two Peas in a Bucket. Um, they're a cloth thicker that you can mist or ink in some way, so I'm going to be playing with those. Uh, here in a little bit and seeing what I can do. Now to balance this layout, since the photo's in the middle and I have the title and the journaling here, um, I've got quite a few hexagons down here. I want to put something more in this corner too, so that's probably where some of my embellishments will go. I may use my Stamping Up Boho Blossoms punch for that or some other flowers. Don't want too many flowers to compete with the ones in the photo, or, or I may put a date sticker or something down here. So. Um, 
let me get started cutting out some hexagons out of this paper and then we'll pull some things together. I'm ready to do uh, to work with these DIY thickers that you get at two peas. They have a white canvas covering um, over them and I want to uh, color these a dark red and they're designed to be mistable and you can use mist with them. I also discovered that you can use markers and I pulled out some of the letters that I, and numbers that I knew I wouldn't use very much. I always give you a lot of everything and so I pulled out a, a Q to start with and I started with a very dark marker. This is called Riding Hood Red and this red is a perfect match to uh, or a very close match to a lot of the reds that are in the, the uh, papers and some of the other uh, thickers that I'm using. Um, and I used that to go over one of the letters, but as you can see it came out extremely dark. So then I took some of the Riding Hood red ink and mixed it with water and created my own mist and misted a letter and it started out pretty red, but when it dried, it dried to a beautiful pink. However, there's no pink in my layout and so that's not going to work. I'll just save that for another, that mist for another opportunity. So my last uh, try here I think is the one I'm going to work with. I'm using a slightly lighter marker. And I've had this problem with reds before where you miss them and they just they turn out pink. Anytime you try to lighten a red, you end up with pink. So I went the opposite direction. I colored a letter, and that's what I've done here with the W, and I'll do this with another letter, is I took the letter and went over it with this, uh, this color's ruby red. Working with markers, you can go all the way around the edges. And this is a water-based marker. And once I had it colored, then I took a paper towel and I took some of the ink away. So instead of trying to add more color, I just started with a darker color and removed color. And if the dry paper towel doesn't get all that you want, you can use a wet paper towel and very quickly remove color until you get the amount of red saturation that you're looking for. And I'm working on wax paper so this doesn't stick too bad. And that's about the right color. And the, this W I did here a, few, a little earlier this morning is, is uh, just about the right uh, color. It's dried. And when this, so I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these and let them dry. And we'll do that in just a moment. In the meantime, let me show you um, where I am on my layout. I've cut uh, my hexagons and I ended up doing the one and three quarter inch high, which is a little over two inches wide. And that's the size that came out from, from the Cricut. Um, and I've cut several of those, um, no more than, I think there's maybe three of one pattern. Um, in here, but most of them I have one or two of each pattern and kind of disperse them around, play with them just a little bit. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more of that. Some of these I can, that you don't see very much of, I can take and cut that apart and use it elsewhere. The only thing I've really glued down at this point is the, the photograph and I put it right in the middle um, here and just, just glued it in the middle so it would be easy to add additional oh, let's see, I think I'll probably end up with that one there additional um, hexagons underneath so I'm just going to cut and, and put some pieces around. I'm also going to make one change here. The word flower which is just laying here very lightly and thicker so it doesn't show up that great on that green so I think I'm going to swap uh, colors and put this one up here. So I'm just doing some playing and until I get the, the colors the way I want them. When I was working with these stickers I had everything but O's so my O is actually the number 9 and I just cut the bottom of it off. I do that a lot with my stickers because you always seem to run out of certain ones. Okay, and I lost my little green one there. And the power, the, the um, red color 
I'm going to say flower power duo. The, the red color is going to go over this. So um, I think that will show up really well. So I'll finish filling this in, these little pieces, and glue all this down. And then we'll come back and do the final embellishment. Okay, I have everything glued down, including the word power that I finished inking and with the red ink and using the paper towel to remove some excess ink. And I think we're ready now to add some embellishment. I've punched uh, some flowers out that I stamped with a uh, stamping up punch that coordinates with their boho blossoms. I don't want to do a lot with flowers because I don't want to overpower my picture and my, my papers, but I thought a few of those might work and I did several different colors. I have these little people that I just got in from, uh, these are Studio Calico, I know I want to use those and I have some stickers. And uh, one of the stickers, this Oh So Lovely from My Mind's Eye, I like it but it's a little bit light in color and it's, I think it's all this green is going to get lost here. So let's do a few things to the sticker. Get my wax paper back out here and some Distress Ink. Darken it up a little bit. Get match the other papers. Right. And I'm going to add it to some red paper from Basic Gray. I think I want to do is add some twine around the edge of that. So I've got some doodlebug twine here. things together. I have um, a sticker that I put the date on. Then I'm going to add this one, I think, with some dimensional. down and I've punched out a whole lot of flowers here and a lot of different uh, colors, different shades and sizes to see what I thought would look good because I, I want something up here in this corner too but I'm afraid that I'll overpower the, um, the other flowers that I have there so I'm not sure if I can use those larger ones up there. I think I may just have to stick to some of the small flowers. And now we have the completed layout. What I finally did with the flowers is uh, to, to get them to look right. My problem with, with these red flowers as part of this paper, they were competing with my punched flowers, so I took the if you can't beat them, join them approach and added a flower to the center of each one and that made it work. And uh, then I used my little people to emphasize the duo idea. This page is about my husband and my mother. My husband used to grow the flowers. My mother would arrange them. And we'd always have these really pretty, beautiful arrangements in our house because she does such uh, interesting things uh, with flowers. So uh, let's take a look at the sketch. We have the photo and the hexagon scattered in kind of a corner-to-corner -corner approach here. Um, I ended up with probably a balanced amount with the, of the hexagons by the time I finished uh, from top to bottom. The journaling, I did end up printing it on the background. I thought that was a little less busy than having another piece of paper there. Added a few embellishments and my title up here at the top in the three different kinds of thickers. And uh, that's 
finished. So you'll find on my blog the uh, lay the sketch and um, some detailed shots of the, of the layout. So please stop by and visit, and I'd love to have you try out the sketch. Thank you for watching.